thanks to the organizers for sending me the invitation. Uh, and I should mention at the top, all of this is uh, joint work with uh, Serge Betskoy. Also, I'm going to diverge slightly from the abstract that I provided. Um, rather than gloss over the fundamental result and then talk in detail about the relatively recent but minor extension, I'll talk more about the main result because similar things haven't exactly come up so far uh, this week. So I sort of had hoped that by the time Thursday rolled around, most of the basics would have been already covered in other people's talks, but it hasn't quite played out that way. Uh, so here's the main theorem that we're going to prove today. And I'll state it, and then we'll get to work defining everything that's in there. Let's see. If M is a compact connected square tiled surface, then almost every collection of cuts on M Singularities. 
But in direction theta, we have a uh, open, connected set of full measure, which is invariant under the flow. Does that cover all the necessary talk? Uh, yeah. Like the picture makes more sense than the words, right? So we assume that our surface has this property, that there is some direction that I can make the square tiled surface decompose into this single string. The nice thing is that if M has a single cylinder direction, it has infinitely many, because the orbit, uh, if M is square tiled, it's a beach surface, and the, when we take this direction theta and we orbit it under the beach group, it does not change the cylinder decomposition. All of those will have single cylinder uh, directions. But something even better happens. So. <coughs> This is an application of a theorem of uh, Carolyn series uh, regarding, I forget the exact terminology she uses, but approximation of orbits of two team groups. So in this case, for almost every theta, there exists a sequence, theta n converging to theta, so that the following holds. Uh, all the theta ends are single cylinder. In any single cylinder direction, the cylinder has a width and a height. Okay, so let's call this height H. So if I have a sequence of sing single cylinder directions in direction theta n of height Hn, we can make Hn go to infinity. And furthermore, hn times the difference between theta and theta n goes to zero. In other words, if this is our single cylinder, I've been talking up my artistic abilities, and here is the drawing, which will represent the entire talk. If I take a point, let's say on the base, and this is flowing in direction theta n. Flowing in direction theta is close, but how close? So this is direction theta. The point is that this gap goes to zero even as a proportional uh, component of the width of the cylinder. So even as the lengths are going to infinity, the error between this approximation uh, vanishes. So the, what's the simplest square tiled surface would just be the torus. On the torus, what's the analog of this? That almost every irrational number has uh, a sequence of rational approximations, Pn over Qn, so that Qn times the absolute value of theta minus Pn over Qn goes to zero. In other words, almost every theta is not well approximable. There's a subsequence of the continued fraction and expansion with diverging partial quotients. And it, that's exactly the analog of what we're doing here. Okay, so we've got a sequence of cylinders on our surface so that as we take more and more, uh, longer and longer, thinner and thinner uh, cylinders, the flow and direction theta is not really distinguishable from this periodic direction. So that covers single cylinder directions, very good. Collection of cuts is the next thing we have to define. So a collection of cuts, actually a skew product is probably going to be simultaneously defined. Because a collection of cuts is how we're going to define a skew product. So I don't want to take away my artwork, so I'll just erase this. So here we are on M. It's flat. That's convenient. So as we flow here in direction theta, we have the geodesic flow phi t in direction of theta of x. Very nice. 
So let's let G be a locally compact abelian group. Uh, with a metric. And we're going to form the skew product, which is going to be a flow on M times G. Okay, so if I start at point X comma little g, I keep flowing on M, no problem, until... Could you use a brighter color? Oh, uh, yeah. It's very visible to me. I don't know if you're doing does orange work? I don't know. From the back, orange always looked indistinguishable to the white to me. Do we have any of that hot paint? Green that looks great. Green? How's that? We all look good. Okay. So what we do on our surface, M, is we throw down some finite length geodesics. Okay. And we tag it with a value out of G. For example, we'll call it uh, G prime. So as we flow on M, we form the skew transformation I can freeze this. G is a nice one. There we go. So we have our skew transformation phi tilde. So as we go along here, it really doesn't look all that interesting. Phi t of x, comma g, as we're in here. But as soon as we hit this segment, our g component translates by this amount. So once we cross here,
will have a property that in any direction I pick, they'll project down to the base of these cylinders with average value zero. So this is basically a, a necessity if we want to have any hope of geodesic uh, extensions. So if I 
do this process to every single pair of cuts. Of which there are finitely many. I'll see. I can even do a di diagonalization argument by making and make this epsilon go to zero. I'll have a sequence of directions theta n where this cylinder is of measure converging to 1 by letting the epsilon go to 0. And if I pick any point inside this cylinder and flow it for time hn, it'll come back to where it started. And what ergodic sum will it see by the time it gets back to where it started? 0. So what will happen if I flow instead of direction theta n in direction theta? Basically the same thing. There's a small amount of regions of error that accumulate because theta is not quite the same direction. But remember, as n tends to infinity, this relative error is converging to 0. So for a set whose measure is converging to 1, we have the ergodic sums For these points equals zero. What does this tell us about the skew product? It's recurrent. Okay. So any way we can do this in almost every direction, the skew product will be recurrent which is 90% of the way to a guy. Because really all we have to do is make the tiniest observations to get there. Unfortunately, in order to claim ergodicity, we have to introduce one more definition, which I've never met anyone who sees this definition and gets happy that it came up in a talk. <laughs> Essential values. This is for the skew transformation. Little g in g is an essential value. If given any set A, which is a subset of the compact translation surface M, there exists a time, not, not zero, For any epsilon. There is a time which is in zero. So the following happens the measure of A intersect V minus T of A intersect the ball of radius epsilon of G. So I'm being a little bit cavalier in my notation here. I'll explain this in a second. tells me that A returns to itself in time T. And this right here is the ball of radius epsilon of pulling back the ergodic sum through time T. So it doesn't just return to itself in time T, it's with ergodic sum close to G. So no matter where I start, I look at a set on my translation surface, I start flowing it around, and if I wait long enough, I'll eventually come back not just to intersect where I started in positive measure, but within this piece that's come back to itself, there's a sub-piece where the ergodic sums are very, very close to this G. So it's a way of breaking down the infinite transformation into really its two component parts, the compact flow and these ergodic sums. So, the good thing about a 
potential values is that they're pretty well behaved once you know they're around. Um, they form a closed subgroup of G, and the skew product is ergodic if and only if the flow on the compact translation surface is ergodic and the set of essential values is all of G. Okay. The bad news is that they're terribly unpleasant to try to actually find. It's one of these things which is theoretically nice, but once you actually need to show there are in any particular system, it's generally not a lot of fun. Okay. But that's exactly what we're going to do. What we're going to do, though, is lean on this very useful result of cons and if you use the little special A with the strange symbol underneath it, it's just the C come next for front check. No? Close enough. He's not here. So. Um, suppose there exists a sequence of sets AN, an epsilon which is positive times Tn, which are going to infinity, so that um, the measure of all the ans is at least epsilon, so their measure is bounded away from zero. And the measure of the symmetric difference of an and phi t of an goes to zero for any fixed t. <clears throat> you also, this is one component of being almost invariant in the flow. Uh, the other is that the infimum over x in a n of the distance between x and phi t sub n of x goes to zero. So within the set a n, points come back through this large time basically to where they started. But the set is more or less invariant under the flow in this particular direction. The sets are not of trivial measure and I don't have space for it down there, so so far all of these conditions are only talking about the flow on M. We need to bring in the ergodic sum somehow, and here's how we do it. This is actually slightly simpler than their version, but it will be sufficient for our purposes. Um, the ergodic sums on A N are uniformly G. Then G is an essential value. We refer to these as quasi rigidity sets. Uh, you're still requiring very nice things to happen about the ergodic sums. You don't have to deal with arbitrary sets anywhere, you just have to find a sequence of sets. Oh, the underlying transformation has to be ergodic, otherwise it doesn't work. Um, but what you have to show is that the sets are more or less invariant under your flow. So, remember our goal is to show that the extension is ergodic in almost every direction. So we need the translation flow to be ergodic on M in almost every direction, which we already have. Uh, that's Herkoff, Nasser, nice Smiley. We're good. Generically, we can assume that whatever direction we're going in, the flow on M is our guide. This is not something we need to worry about. And notice that these single cylinders immediately provide. Sorry. No. These single cylinders immediately provide these two components here. Any reasonable way we can play with them. If I flow it through a fixed 
time, what happens to this cylinder? It just sort of flows up, which makes it sort of, first of all, the top comes back to the bottom, so that's not even an issue. But remember that these heights are going to infinity. So for any fixed time, what could possibly go wrong is something near the top of a proportional height, which is shrinking to zero. So this right here is going to happen for free. And the fact that we're choosing these single cylinder periodic directions is going to make this happen for free also. In the periodic direction, they in fact come back exactly to themselves. In the actual direction theta, the fact that this error is converted to zero means they come back very nearly to themselves. So all we have to do is slightly modify our construction so instead of getting recurrent, we'll actually get essential values. So, I'll draw again. So pick a pair of cuts that have value g and minus g. Do this trick with all the other pairs. So. So, what was 
was special about the cut that we chose to do last? Absolutely nothing. For each one of our pairs of cuts, we can do this process. And we conclude okay. that, um, so, if M was square tiled with a single cylinder direction, then any value taken on a cut is an essential value for almost every an essential value of the infinite skew product for almost every bit. Right, what thetas were we dealing with? We were exactly only looking at the thetas for which we could draw these single cylinder directions whose directions was very closely approximating theta, which was a generic condition. Okay. And remember, the set of essential values forms a closed subgroup of G. Generically, we get to assume that the flow on M in direction theta was already ergodic. We could have, in fact, assumed we need to it. So what do we need? So if the set of values in G taken on the cuts generates a dense subgroup, then this transformation is ergodic in almost every direction. Of course, what would happen if we had chosen values on the cuts that didn't generate a dense subgroup? We would automatically know that the skew transformation is not ergodic because there's some open set in G that ergodic sums can never even enter. So there's a portion of the uh, skew space m times g that our flow will simply never enter. So using this randomized procedure of starting off with our compact square tile translation surface and randomly throwing down pairs of cuts in the only possible way that we, not the only, in a very reasonable way to even hope for ergodicity, namely pairs of congruent um, parallel uh, segments tagged with plus or minus g, where the set of values that we choose on the various cuts generates a dense subgroup. That would have all been very necessary to even hope for ergodicity. If we do that, then almost certainly we have ergodicity in almost every direction. So that's the main bit that I'm feeling rather glad I didn't just skim over and jump to this next part. But any questions on the idea here? Okay. So this was all talking about square tile translation surfaces with single cylinder directions, which seems like a very weird condition. Um, square tile comes up a lot. Single cylinder direction comes up less often. But there's a lemma of Zorich. Probably can't go wrong. Say it instead. I'll say I kind of forget. I'm sorry. Um, within each stratum. Square tile M with single cylinder directions uh, are dense. <laughs> and it's not a big uh, leap from their result to show there exists a countable dense. Set. 
So within each stratum, we actually have a countable dense subset of surfaces where this technique all works great. which are um, square tiled and uh, which have single cylinder directions and for which all the singularities project to rational coordinates, okay. which makes them square tiled. Mm -hmm. And if so you were doing your deformation, you were just deforming within that set, or you were? Just deforming within that set, yeah. So what you end up doing is, <laughs> actually this is a reasonable point to call for references. Um, because I, I don't presume this is new, but it's a bit unusual way of phrasing things. 
suppose you have a sigma finite measure space X and a topological space Y, a bare space, so that there's a fixed countable dense subset in Y, so it's separable. But you're not changing the countable dense subset, it's fixed, so that for each, for almost every X over here, you have a corresponding residual set formed by taking balls around that fixed set then there's in fact a residual set in Y which belongs to almost every residual set formed by X. If that makes sense. For almost every X we get a residual set, and then the result is there's a residual set which belongs to almost every such set generated. Does that sound familiar to anyone? It, it seems like a natural thing to ask, but only if you're a person who likes mixing almost everywhere in dense G delta, which doesn't come up all But that's basically what's going on. So we have this fixed countable collection that we use to form balls for a particular collection of cuts for a particular direction. Other questions? Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's uh, for the first one for the book. Okay. The only thing you need is in, this, uh, in the proof itself, if I understand well, is to be able to put the end of the cuts wherever we want in the surface. Yes. At the precise time we're about cylinders. Yes, exactly. So instead of saying almost every cut, the real condition that you can put everything. Yeah, so it's any cut where you can actually separate the endpoint of the cut from all the singularities and all the endpoints of the other cuts by an appreciable amount. Uh, and because it's a square peg, there is no concrete way of seeing it. Because it's a test to be rationality or what? There is no, I don't know what it is. Of seeing what exactly, sorry. Uh, if, the, if you are able to do that with, with a particular point. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, what you, how about an example? Okay, so, for examples, it doesn't... So back in, in the paper where Serge and I proved that, that first result, we had a corresponding result that didn't deal with randomly generated cuts, but very particular ones, which had its genesis in the following bizarre picture. So, <clears throat> Project Ultra Dry take a look at the following surface, where everything is identified like you expect, and they form a skew product by assigning the values plus one here and minus one here. So it's just a Z cover. And they show it is not ergodic for almost every direction. Unbeknownst to them, I have been playing around with the following surface. Okay, where now everything is identified as you expect. And this is ergodic in almost every direction. However, this, what we, uh, what's generally termed a staircase, is formed involving this as sort of like the base unit. This surface is the same as this one. If you just take this square and you stick it over there, there's an identification that was going on here to make this staircase link up as it appears. But the corresponding um, plus or minus one values, I might get my signs wrong, but it was like minus one here and plus one there, I think. That is or got. This one isn't. And what is the distinguishing, what, what I view as the fundamental thing that distinguishes their cuts from mine, is that these are all singularities. This is not. So that cut there has endpoint, which is not a singularity, which allows your geodesic flow, you can make a cylinder that behaves nicely as it passes that point and just splits the ergodic sums in those different ways. Whereas here, if you have a cylinder that crosses here, they end up going in totally different directions. Well, the same direction, but you know. Um, so we do have a result that sort of says when this type of construction can be ergodic. But what's necessary is that you have endpoints that aren't singularities. Uh, 
Thank you.